beautiful lush moss. It's pretty, has health benefits for plants and has water retention properties that are off the scale. Of course moss is good. Or is it? In this video, we're going to explore whether the moss is actually beneficial for a living tree in a small container, or if it is in fact jeopardising the health of your bonsai. Stay tuned and you can make your own decision on the question, is moss good or bad for your bonsai? There are a lot of videos out there that show very well how to propagate moss. That's not what this video is about. And besides, propagating moss is not a difficult proposition. It's pretty straightforward. Let's start by busting a couple of myths that I've heard about moss. Firstly, I've heard it said that moss produces humic acid, which helps the root grow. Fact is, moss takes three or four years to decompose due to the antioxidants that it generates and stores. So it'll be more than three years before the decaying moss produces any humic substance anyway. And by then we've probably repotted and removed the moss. So, myth busted. What I can tell you is that moss holds moisture better than most soils. And with the water, antioxidants and dark cover, it makes a lucrative haven for tree roots in search of more growing space. And that's the far more compelling reason why roots grow upwards into the moss. Now here's another one. Information out there claims the reason moss doesn't compost easily is because of its high lignin content. Now that's clearly false since almost no moss species contain lignin, which transports water in the veins of plants and trees. And as its name implies, lignifies those veins to wood. Moss does not have veins. Now with those myths debunked, let's move on to the horticultural benefits of using moss on your bonsai. And I'm also going to talk about the risks in a minute, so you know it's not all sunshine and roses. Now perhaps the most important benefit that moss gives you is that it can absorb and retain more than 20 times its own weight in water. And this amazing capacity to hold so much water means there's always going to be moisture at the surface of your soil. So all those fine roots just beneath the surface are not going to dry and die in the heat of summer, assuming you don't forget to water it. And very much related to that is the vertical distribution of water within the pot. And that means it's time for the whiteboard. So let's start with the pot and fill it with some granular soil. And now we'll add some water. And a tree, but that's not important right now. You may remember from my video about pot size, the concept of water balance within the pot. And it's simple, gravity pulls the water down and capillary action in the soil pulls the water up. Now, in all watered soil you get what's called a perched water table, and from there upwards the water density becomes less and less saturated. So, in all bonsai pots on the planet, we get this vertical gradient in water saturation, and I try to remedy this to some extent by using finer grain particles as my top dressing to wick up the water a little better. But instead, what if we just used the ultimate water absorber, that is moss? So there you have it. By keeping a highly retentive medium on top of our soil, we are forcing a more even water distribution vertically throughout the soil. Now another benefit that I mentioned earlier, trees need to grow, and we're restricting their root growth by confining them to a small container. So especially in autumn, having that extra half inch of growing space for the roots is really healthy. Another well-known benefit, especially for sphagnum moss, due to its antiseptic properties, it is an ideal medium for packing onto an air layer or a ground layer to keep it moist and yet free of pathogens like bacteria and fungi. Arguably, the biggest benefit of moss is that it looks nice. It looks great on penjings, almost like grass in the scene. In fact, if you show any of your trees in an exhibition, you have to cover the soil with moss anyway. And it can add extra interest if there's more than one type of moss or more textures in your scene. And now let's talk about the problems and risks that moss is gonna give you. Firstly, moss harbors a lot of insects in their larva. And in the worst case, these little grubs can actually feed on young tender roots. Now that's not very common, but what does happen frequently with moss is that it attracts birds, which attack the moss, hunting for those insects and grubs, especially if you use organic fertilizer. And that can leave a mess, but more seriously, it can expose a lot of roots. So some people attach mesh right on top of the moss to protect it from the birds, but it does spoil the look of the moss. 
When moss dries, it strangely repels water. So if your moss is dry, it might actually be preventing your soil from getting a proper watering. You can circumvent this by misting the moss a few minutes before watering, or by watering twice. But without moss, you just don't need to do that. And along the same lines, moss on the surface prevents you from seeing how dry your soil is. This means your growing medium might be drying, and you could be neglecting it. Or alternatively, you could be watering when it doesn't need watering. Here's a common issue. When moss grows onto the trunk base, it keeps the bark permanently damp, and that prevents the bark from looking old and cracked up like a mature old tree. Whenever you see this, just pick the moss off the trunk and wash off any algae using some soapy water and a toothbrush. To conclude, some bonsai professionals and artists I know meticulously remove all signs of moss they see growing on the soil because of the risks and issues it brings. Other notable bonsai artists say that the benefits in tree health, like the extra growing space in moss, are well worth the inconveniences. Me? I don't grow it purposely on the bonsai soil. It just seems to regrow every year, and I leave it there unless it gets too thick because that's when the birds attack it. What about you? Let me know in the comments what your opinion is on moss for bonsai. And then take a look at this video that will help you understand the effects a shallow pot has on the health of your bonsai.